This is the city, Los Angeles, California. 25 miles from the heart of the Civic Center lies the Port of Los Angeles. It's the largest man-made harbor in the world. With a fleet of over 700 fishing boats, it's become the most important commercial fishing center in the nation. It's a bustling port which handles goods coming into the country from all over the world. There are agencies set up to handle most of the harbor's problems. Occasionally, things get out of hand in the city. When they do, I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. October 7th, it was fair in Los Angeles. We were working out of Community Relations Division. The boss is Captain Walton. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It was 8.40 a.m. We checked in with the captain. He handed us an assignment. The Los Angeles Police Department's Community Relations Conference at Lake Arrowhead. Its purpose, a vital one. To find ways to improve the department's relationship with the public. Its goal, less crime in the streets. Yeah, that's it. The conference coordinator asked each bureau and division to send two or three men. I picked you two. Nice up at Lake Arrowhead this time of the year. We didn't select it for its scenic beauty. The University of California has a residential conference center up there, and they were good enough to let us use the facilities. Besides, it's away from everything. Quiet, secluded, a place where you can think without interruption. Kind of a retreat. You might call it that, without the religious overtones. Know anything about these conferences? No, sir, just what we've heard. It's your chance to let your hair down, speak your piece. If you've got any ideas how we can get the policemen and the public to cooperate more fully than they do, Arrowhead's the place to get them off your chest. The brass won't be there. The brass will be, but rank has no privileges up there. Everything's off the cuff and informal. That sounds interesting. It is, and important. You know how great the need is to improve communication and relations between the police and the public. We can't do our job without their help. And we won't get it as long as they think of us as the heat, the fuzz. We've got to change that image. That's where the conference comes in. Right. To reevaluate old methods and develop new ones which will bring the public and the department closer together. Well, an open discussion is the place to do that. Some good ideas came out of the last four conferences. We expect some good ones this time, too. We'll do our best, Skipper. You'll do more than that. You're not just going to take part. You've both got specific assignments. Yes, sir. You've got a meeting with the conference coordinator tomorrow. He'll give you a full briefing, but I'll tell you this much. Joe, you're going to be in charge of one of the discussion groups. Bill, you're going to be the group's recorder. Yes, sir. That doesn't mean you won't be called on for ideas. You will. We'll be ready with them. Good. Be ready to change them, too. How's that, Captain? You're being sent to Arrowhead to learn something. Tuesday, October 8th, 9.20 a.m. We went upstairs to meet with the conference coordinator. You know, Joe, I'm looking forward to Arrowhead. Pretty country up there. Yeah, it is. Be nice to get out of town for a while. We ought to do it more often. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Eileen's always after me to take her and the kids up to the mountains. Is that so? Yeah, but it's hard with my hay fever. You've got hay fever? I never knew that. Oh, yeah, for years. Jimson weed gives it to me every time. I use an old family remedy my grandmother handed down. Never fails. Well, you're going to bring some up to Arrowhead, aren't you? Couldn't go without it, even this time of the year. Going to make a fresh batch before we leave. Nothing in it but pure water and a half dozen herbs. Is that so? It's a combination of the herbs that does the trick. Well, that figures. Bet you can't guess what they are. No, what are they? Sorry, Joe, can't tell you. Family secret. Nine thirty a.m. The conference coordinator was Sergeant Ron Nelson, Community Relations Division. He outlined the duties of discussion group leaders and recorders to us and several others chosen for the job. And that brings us to the discussion groups themselves. There'll be 14 in all. Each will have a leader and a recorder. Besides taking part in the discussions, the leader's main job is to keep the discussion going. You mean in case nobody has anything more to say? That's it. It's your job to, well, draw them out, ask questions, and don't concentrate on just a few. Involve everybody. If you see somebody just sitting, drop the ball on his lap. 
What about the recorder? What's his job? Taking minutes? No, not exactly. We don't expect you to be secretaries. You've just got to keep a record of any worthwhile suggestions made. And if the majority's for them, well, they're worthwhile. Now, let me say one more thing. The topic of the conference is, as you know, involving the line officer in the department's community relations program. It sounds like a simple subject, but it's not. It's more difficult than you think. It's loaded. It treads on toes and, well, it goes against the grain. Once your group gets into it, expect fireworks. And don't discourage them either. They're good. The best ideas come from arguments. But at the same time, don't let arguments sidetrack your discussions. Keep your people on the ball, focused on the topic, even if you have to shout them down. Sergeant, I'm puzzled about something. Yes, sir? The topic concerns line officers in particular. Yet only a few of them are going to the conference. Why? That's a good point. There's been confusion about that before, but there's a good reason. We're not going to teach anybody anything at the conference. Not directly, I mean. And that's not its purpose. And that's why line officers aren't invited. But how do you mean, Ron? Well, many of you meet the public, that's true, but actually it's the line officer who serves under you who makes the initial contacts. It's the patrol officers you supervise who make the regular everyday associations. So as their superiors, you will go to the conference to consider their problems and hopefully find solutions for them. And then, when you come back, you'll see to it those solutions are put into practice. Well, in other words, after we come up with some answers, we come back and pass them on, is that it? That's it, exactly. If we come up with any answers. You will. You're experienced men. You've all been line officers. Nobody's better qualified. That's why you were chosen to go to the conference. In short, we're going to have our brains picked. I wouldn't say picked, sir. I'd say explored. Now, how's that, Ron? You'll be surprised by what you discover about yourselves. October 14th, 8.50 a.m. We left Los Angeles and drove east along the San Bernardino Freeway towards the Lake Arrowhead Conference. 11.20 a.m. Since there are almost 5,700 men in the Los Angeles Police Department, we knew only a few of the others who arrived at the University of California's Residential Conference Center at Lake Arrowhead. First item on the agenda, registration. Among those chosen to attend the conference were officers from every bureau and division in the department all present to search for methods by which we could more effectively involve both police officers and the public in the department's community relations program. 11.55 a.m. After registering, we went to our quarters to unpack and settle in. Hello. Welcome to Gatehouse Cottage. Is that its name? Yeah, I guess we'll be sharing it. Keith Barrett, Sergeant Patrol. Joe Friday is my partner, Bill Gannon. Good to know you. Same here. I stowed my stuff in the bedroom. It's kind of small, but if either one of you want it... No, any place will do. Nice twin beds right here. Fine. Oh, I better take this one, Joe. It's farthest from the window. You do that. I got hay fever, you know. Oh, is that so? Oh, yeah. It's nice up here, isn't it? It's the kind of duty I really like. You ever been to a conference before? No, but I'm looking forward to this one. This community relations thing. I've got a lot of ideas I'd like to put across. Well, that's what we're up here for. Now, if you ask me, there's only one reason we got a communication problem. We play too many favorites. Favorites? Sure. And the rest of the people resent it. You can't blame them. What kind of favorites? The minority groups. All of them. We've got them on our minds. Are you saying we shouldn't? No, not at all. But we shouldn't forget the rest of the world either. I didn't know we were. You're CROs, aren't you? That's right. Then that's the reason. How's that? You're not in a patrol car cruising the streets. Hey, what's that stuff? That's my hay fever remedy. Got a bad? Real bad. Jimson weed. But this fixes it. Just mix it with a little water. Yeah, it's kind of a shame it doesn't work as well on other things, isn't it? Yeah, like what? Misconceptions. They can be dangerous. One forty-five p.m. The conference began with a keynote address by Chief Thomas Redden in which he stressed two things. The importance of the community relations program and the necessity for line officers to bring its policies to the public. Afterwards, we were divided into our discussion groups. As discussion leader, I began by asking the members of my group to introduce themselves. Sergeant Tom Benson, traffic. Lieutenant Phil Johnson, vice. Sergeant Tom Wallen, I work Wilshire Patrol. John Rule, Lieutenant Central Jail Division. Sergeant Sam Hunter, training division. I'm Captain Carl Fuller, homicide. Sergeant Keith Barrett, Hollywood Patrol. Bill Gannon, community relations. All right, thank you, gentlemen. I have a suggestion, Friday. Rank's not important here. Let's not even use it. Call me Carl. All right, sir. Now, you all know why we're here. 
to search for and to explore methods by which the line officer can be more effectively involved in the department's community relations program. It's a good title, but they'll never make a movie out of it. <laughs> well, I read it and reread it, but I'm still not sure I understand it. Well, here's how it was explained to me. Now, it's one thing for the department to have a good community relations program. But it's useless if the officer on the street who deals with the public isn't able to use it. Police participation in things like community councils, youth programs, school and church functions, all make the public aware of our problems, involve them in our aims and our goals. But if the line officer who actually deals firsthand with the citizens isn't able to relate to them and gain their cooperation, nothing good at all is accomplished now, is it? In other words, we've got to search for and explore methods by which the line officer can put community relations into practice. That's it. Methods by which residents and radio car officers can get together and understand each other's point of view. There are a lot of people who don't want to understand our point of view. Well, there are people like that, sure, but only because they're resentful and suspicious. And that's exactly what we've got to change. How do we change it? We won't get their cooperation by simply asking for it. I say in time, we will. In fact, in certain cases, I have. You wouldn't have if you worked in Vice like I do. All right, anybody else have an opinion? Sure, I do. I agree with Phil, but he doesn't go far enough. There are all kinds of people who don't want to see our side of things. Name some. Well, minority groups, for a start. Whenever anybody says minority groups, they usually mean Negroes. Now, come on now, that's not really true. Now, true or not, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the Negro population as an example. You say they don't try to understand our point of view. Well, how can they, when they think of the laws we enforce as white man's laws, when they think of us as the other side? Whose fault is that? Yeah, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I repeat, that's exactly the sort of thing we've got to remedy. It's their attitude. We created it. All right, now, that's past history, gentlemen. We know the condition does exist, and it's got to be changed. Now, any suggestions on that? Sure. Stop leaning over backwards. Treat the minorities like anybody else. Nobody I know leans over backwards. And you can't lump people together like that. Each minority has its own problems. Sure, that's what I mean. It's their problem, not ours. That's where you're dead wrong, fella. Well, how do you figure? It is our problem. Yeah. We're policemen. p.m. No evening session was scheduled. We had an early dinner and returned to the cottage. I saw you two leave the dining room. No room for seconds? Promised the wife I wouldn't put on weight. Some of the boys are planning to walk off the meal, but me, I always like to relax after dinner. Is that so? Interesting afternoon, wasn't it? Certainly a lot of different points of view. <laughs> they didn't seem to think very much of mine, though, did they? About minority groups. Leaning over backwards? Yeah. But I'll swear to it, I've seen it done a hundred times. I've done it myself. Why don't you give us an example, Barrett? Sure, that's easy. Just last week, a couple of kids in an old hacked-up hot rod were tearing along Sunset and piled into a tree. Uh -huh. One was Negro, the other white. The Negro was driving. Now, you figure out which one gave me the most trouble. The Negro. You know it. And you figure it was because he was black? Well, sure. He was throwing me a challenge, daring me to do my duty. I had to play it down. Possible that you misread his motives? How do you mean? Maybe there were other reasons for the things he said. Yeah. He was the driver. The accident was his fault. He could have been frightened, couldn't he? He knew he was the one in trouble. He was reacting, maybe. There could have been another reason, too. Yeah, what's that? Your attitude. October 15th, 10.30 a.m. The second session was in progress. Bill, acting as recorder, noted all suggestions made. After the conference, these and all those made by the other groups would be presented to the chief for consideration and possible action. Anyway, that's my suggestion. New type uniform, something different. You know. Look smart, be smart. Well, it's worth considering. It's the kind of things kids notice and respond to. Yes, and that's the purpose of community relations, isn't it? To get that response. I think the uniforms we have now are about as sharp as you'll find. Tell me something. You ever taken a good look at your badge? I mean, really looked at it. Now, that's the best design shield I've ever seen. A lot of thought went into this badge before the old one was discarded. Now, gentlemen, in my opinion, I don't think we need new equipment designs. I believe the purpose of this conference is to see if maybe we don't need to redesign ourselves a little. I'd like to have something put down. Promotions. What's that got to do with community relations? Everything. If a man's happy, it shows. and People respond to it. And the best way to make him happy is by making it easier to step up in rank. Or by raising his pay. That's a good idea, too. Carl, what do you say? Well, it's going to come up in every discussion group here. Since it never does any harm to ask, we might as well put it down. But I doubt it's going to do much, community relations-wise. Well, I think it will. 
Promotions could get certain old timers in the department off the streets. Old timers? Hmm. Most of us here are old timers. Well, I'm not talking about any of you necessarily. You'd rather have recruits on patrol? We can teach recruits. They're willing to learn. We wouldn't be here if we weren't. I know one or two who aren't. Sam, tell us your point. All right, but I've got several. I'm in training division. We take new recruits and teach them the new concepts, and we do a pretty good job. But then when they go out into the field, they're naturally teamed with experienced men, old timers. And in some cases, at least, everything we've taught them goes right out the window. The old timer contradicts most of it, ignores the rest. Like community relations? Yes. Maybe they don't realize it, but their outlook is old fashioned. They need to take a fresh look at things, a fresh look at themselves. Keith, you're in patrol. Would you say Sam's right? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I don't know what's bothering him, but he's wrong. Am I? You're a good example of what I mean. Well, yesterday, you said we'd lean over backwards to cater to the minority groups. That's the kind of mixed up outlook I'm talking about, a typical attitude of an old timer. Yeah, but it's not the old timer who does it, it's your recruits, and I'll give you an example. One of my men had one of your new graduates in the car with him when they picked up a liquor store at 211. And when they got there, the senior man went inside to talk to the store owner. The new man talked to the four bystanders. Oh, he was nice and polite, good community relations all the way. He explained the situation and asked for their cooperation. He wrote down their names and addresses. But the only one he held was white, and he turned out to be clean. What does that prove? The other three were Negro. They could have been clean, too. Two of the three addresses they gave were false. White men give false addresses all the time. Yeah, but don't you see? That recruit should have talked harder to those three men. He should have stayed with it until he got their right IDs. All I see is a mistake in judgment. Maybe he figured the white man looked more like a criminal. All right. I'll give you another example. A street fight, Hollywood and Vine. By the time I got there, a motor officer had separated the two men. One a Negro, and he was the one who admitted starting the fight. But the officer had the white man in cuffs. So what? Maybe the white man was a hothead. Maybe he wouldn't stop swinging. Maybe you don't know all the facts. What's this got to do with community relations? Our topic is a line officer. Dozens of people saw what that line officer did. How do you think they're going to feel about cooperating with us now after seeing him cuff the wrong man? How could he know it was the wrong man? He was stopping a fight. I don't know what you're getting at, but it sure doesn't sound good. Not to you, maybe, but that's no surprise. All right, all right, let's settle down. We're not here to argue. But, Joe, this is important. He's got it all wrong. I work with a white partner, and whenever we investigate a traffic accident involving a Negro and a white man, the Negro talks to me, not my partner. Well, what does that show? It shows the Negro feels he'll get a fairer shake from me than from my white partner, not the other way around, as he says. You mean you lean over backwards for your own people? Sure. Well, yeah. It's kind of human nature, isn't it? I understand him better, and he's bound to get a fairer shake. Sam was wrong about the old timers. How do you mean? You said some of them needed a fresh look at themselves, didn't you? That's right. Shouldn't you have said, we all do? Five p.m. The discussion groups reconvened and continued until early evening. Community relations is a two-way street. Sure, our topic is how to get the policeman involved, but we've got to get the citizen interested in him as well. I have a feeling that's a separate topic. Well, it might be, but it's a part of this one. Would you phrase that as a suggestion? Sure. Increase public interest in the individual policeman. Use all the methods possible. Television, newspapers, radio, and so on. Got it. I've got another suggestion to make. Go ahead. Well, I think the line officer would be more involved with the community if he knew more about what's going on in the neighborhood he patrols. It's his job to know. Any good policeman would. Uh, I'm not talking about crime. I mean civic things. Now, if line officers were told at roll call which schools were planning dances, which stores were having sales, which local teams were leading, things like that, they'd be more involved. That's a good idea. Make the line officer feel that he was a part of things. And when a school gets a new principal or a church a new minister, he could be asked down to roll call to meet the man. That's it makes sense. Put it down. Right. Now, any more suggestions? What about you, Tom? Can't think of anything offhand. Keith, you should have one. You know my ideas. That's right, but not your reasons. I told you my reasons. Not really. You simply told us that you feel unfair preference is being given to minority groups, such as Tom's. That's a laugh. To you, maybe, but I've seen it time and again. I like those examples you told us. Look, I can quote a hundred more. Like last month, for instance, Highland Avenue. We were called to investigate a 459. We found the door to the apartment smashed. Every drawer and cabinet rifled. The owner was away when it happened, but he'd seen two men watching the place. He knew their names. We went to talk to them. They denied everything. They were Negroes. So what? My partner was ready to back off to believe him. Now, he'd never do that with Caucasian suspects, but with them, he took their word. Well, I didn't. I knew they were guilty. I kept checking, and I found evidence. Now, wait a minute. 
How did you know they were guilty? I just knew. Because they were black? No, not because they were black, because of the way they acted. How did they act? I can't remember exactly. Why didn't your partner see it? Well, how should I know? You said you knew they were guilty. A lot of suspects act nervous, confused, worried. You know that. How are they different? Yeah, how could you be so sure? Hey, look, what is this, an interrogation? What are you trying to prove? That story you told us the other night, the traffic accident on Sunset, the driver who gave you a hard time, the Negro? Yeah, what about it? Any driver in that spot would have acted the same way. Now, what made you single him out? Hey, look, lay off of me, will you? What about the examples this morning? What bugged you about the officer putting the cuffs on the white man? Was it because he was innocent or because he was white? Think about it. It's hard to be sure. Because he was innocent. But you didn't know that at the time. What is this? What are you trying to get me to say? And what about that 211 you told us about, when the new recruit took the phony IDs from the three Negroes? What really bugged you about it? The fact that they were innocent or the fact that they pulled a fast one? Wait a minute. You're trying to say that I've got it in for your people, that I'm prejudiced? You've said over and over again, we bend over backwards too much to please the minorities. That could be just another way of saying we're not hard enough on them. Well, no, that isn't what I meant. Man, look at him. That idea doesn't go down so well, does it? Maybe now you know why you don't get any cooperation from the black people in your area. What about the white people in yours? How's that? This morning you said you favor your own kind. Human nature, you said. Maybe that's just another way of saying you don't play fair with the rest. Are you saying that I'm like him? I'm not saying that at all, Benson. I don't have to. Yeah? You did. <laughs> October 16th, 2.20 p.m. The conference was over. We spent the morning discussing ways of implementing our suggestions. Now we were getting ready to drive back to Los Angeles. We hadn't seen Keith Barrett or Tom Benson all day. You know, I may just decide to put this stuff on the market. Is that right? And if I do, I got the perfect slogan for it. I'll bet you do. Not a sneeze in a bottle. Hey, you got room for this in your bag? I'm all locked up. Yeah, I can squeeze it in. Well, Joe, you've got to admit, this has sure been an interesting experience, and it's a great spot up here. Hey, been hoping you'd get back. Wanted to say so long. Yeah, we've been looking for you all morning, Barrett. Yeah. Went for a walk early. Been walking ever since. Trees, the water, that kind of help a man see himself. Well, I guess we all need to take a good look at ourselves once in a while. I did. I didn't like what I saw, Joe. You guys were right to lean on me the way you did. Funny how a man can think he's one thing and be another. You may not believe this, but I always thought I was one of the least prejudiced people around. A lot of us think that. It's quite a thing to see yourself as you really are. Kind of shakes you up. I wonder if Tom Benson feels that way, too. Oh, he does. Yeah? That long walk, we took it together. Let's see, did I forget anything? I think a lot of us did. 3.40 p.m. We were packed and ready to return to Los Angeles. <sighs> Certainly a shame to leave this mountain air. Got to bring Eileen the kids up here sometime for sure. Yeah, you should. It's real pretty. Do them a world of good. They suffer from hay fever? No, it doesn't bother them at all. Of course, I'd have to take my remedy. You didn't think it would work. Well, most home remedies don't, as a rule. You notice I haven't sneezed even once? Yeah, what's that? What's what? These pills. Oh, something my doctor gave me. For what? My hay fever remedy. Your hay fever remedy? Oh, yeah, I'm slightly allergic to it. <laughs> The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. The Los Angeles Police Department's Arrowhead Conferences engaged 350 key department personnel in the identification of barriers to understanding, confidence, mutual respect, and the development of plans for effective two-way communication between the department and all segments of the community. From those meetings came the beginning of an awareness and concept which have developed into one of the most effective and comprehensive police community relations programs.